Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to CSS 3 in 30 Days. Today's day number 21, and we're going to be coding up some animated CSS only spinners. Let's check it out. Animated spinners right here, day number 21. We're going to be making these right here. Spinners, what would you use a spinner for when you're loading content, when you're loading uh, a page, you know, when you're loading an application, an image, that's where you'd use a spinner. You see it quite often in websites, applications, software. Uh, it's simply, you know, or watching videos even. The spinner just indicates that something is happening, something is loading, and it's, uh, they're kind of fascinating to look at. And these are only made in, or these are made in CSS3 only. So let's jump in and get started. Here in our code editor, we're going to go ahead and download uh, day number 21 spinners. I'm going to give you a second to do that. In fact, you could just pause the video, go ahead and do that. And I'm just going to show you a couple things. So here's the index file. HTML is very simple. It's simply a div with the class of spinner one and a div with the class of spinner two. That's it. Let's jump into our sandbox and get coding our CSS. First thing we're going to do is we're going to select spinner dash one and we're going to give it a position of relative display of inline block vertical line of middle and now we're going to give it a width 64 pixels and height 64 pixels and a border radius of 64 pixels you could also say 100 percent that should do the trick but 64 pixels means it is going to be, if the border radius, border radius is 64 pixels and it's the same as width and height, then it's gonna be a perfect circle. All right, if we save that, you probably shouldn't actually see anything at this point. You just see an empty space that's 64 by 64. Beauty. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say spinner dash one and the before pseudo element position absolute. We gotta give it a content of an empty string, of course, and width, whoops, width of 64 pixels, height of 64 pixels, and a border radius, again, 64 pixels. We're going to give it a color of 323, and this is the text color, 323B40. But here's the thing, there's gonna be no text, but we're gonna be using an interesting CSS uh, value called current color. It's kind of like a CSS variable. So watch this, if I were to go box shadow, inset, negative five pixels, zero, zero, and then five pixels, and then current color. That's gonna grab the actual color. So it's kind of like you set a variable. So I'm gonna save that, check it out in the browser. You can see the current color is that gray because uh, it's grabbing current color. If I were to remove this, I'm not really sure what would happen. It looks like it would be, it's grabbing the text color. Uh, it's inheriting the text color from the body. But if I were to change this to red, the current color should be red. So that's how that works right there. Pretty fun little CSS trick there. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna clip this shape, this unusual shape we just made to a rectangle, uh, but we're going to actually define the values here. Zero, 64 pixels, comma, 32 pixels, comma, zero. That will give us this shape here. Again, kind of weird, but hang with me. It's kind of like, a, like, a, like an eight bit hockey stick hanging upside down. Um, but watch this. We're gonna actually say border radius. Oh, here's the problem. <laughs> oh, there we go, border radius. I thought I already added that, uh, but I didn't do it properly. Border radius 64. So this hockey stick shape is actually gonna now get this shape here. That looks a lot nicer. So you can see what the border radius did to change that. So this, this shape there, without the border radius, uh, actually kind of looks like it's very unusual. The right side of it is thicker, the top side of it is is a bit thinner and long, but the border radius really gives it a nice feel. And you can almost see now how that's gonna turn in, you know, how that's gonna look when we spin it. So now we're gonna do say animation. We're gonna give the animation name of rotator. Uh, one second, infinitely linear. Uh, in fact, I wanna ease it, I think that might be Let's see what that looks like. And now we need to create a keyframe. So keyframes, it's called rotator, or rotator. At 0%, we're gonna say transform, and we're gonna rotate it 
180 degrees. And let's uh, say 50%, we're gonna go rotate to transform, whoops, transform, rotate back to zero degrees. And then 100%, we're gonna do back to 180 degrees. Let's see what that does. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay. This, the first one actually needs to be negative 180 degrees, but I'm gonna try something here. Okay. So do you see, because I have an ease, it's actually doing this like jump, 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 jump. If I make it linear, let's see, it should just be spinning. Exactly. But now I'm wondering if I just started at zero, let's just try something. Start at zero and I just say 100%, we spin at 360. It should still do the same thing. Yeah, and now I can do ease. I like that. It's kind of neat. So let's try that, okay? But now what I want to do is I wanted to also animate the box shadow. And we're going to say inset negative five pixels, zero, zero, five pixels, current color. That's in fact the same box shadow as right now, but we need to set it to this because what I want to do is now make a very uh, very it make a variation of it. So box shadow at okay, this is where I might need. Let's try this negative one, and then one. Let's see what that looks like. Very weird. So here's where I'm going to actually throw that fifty percent back in there, and I'm going to transform the whole thing. Uh, I'm going to say 180 degrees here, starts at zero to 180 degrees and then 360. And I'm going to do this box shadow at 50%. I'm going to do this. And then at 100%, I'm going to go back to this. That should give me an interesting effect. Okay. It does do something. It's kind of like a, we're doing some weird stuff here, folks. We're going to change this back to linear. That should probably make, there we go. So there we go. So you see how as it goes around, it gets thinner and then thicker, thinner and thicker. It's kind of neat. It looks like a tadpole in a way. Now, I don't like how it's thin on the side. I kind of want it to get thin at the top. So that's where I'm going to go back here to the 0%. And I'm going to say negative 180 degrees to start at. Then it's going to go spin to zero degrees at the top, which will make it thin at the top. And then I'm going to bring it to 180 degrees here. That is going to change where it gets smaller at the top. Yep. I like that. That looks good. There's our first rotator. Now let's go down to the next spinner. So I'm going to leave the keyframes at the bottom. Good practice to do that. So your code is organized. The next spinner is going to be called or is called spinner dash two. Position, relative, margin, 32 all around, and display, inline block, vertical align, middle, same styles as the top, excuse me, the top one, uh, those first four lines, 16 pixels, width, 16 pixels, height, and then we're going to do border radius. This is where I had the problem last time, I just wrote border instead of border radius, 16 pixels, background color. 323B40. Three, three, cool. And now uh, we're going to save that and see if it does anything. Okay. I call, <laughs> silly Brad. I said spinner one. You probably caught that. Spinner two. There we go. So we have a dot. We have a nice circle. Let's continue. Now I'm going to say spinner dash two before pseudo element and spinner dash two after pseudo element position absolute display inline block vertical align middle height 16 pixels width 16 pixels border radius 16 pixels background color inherit content of course we need the content i'm going to put that at the top i like it having right after position there we go and that's going to, uh, you're not going to see anything. It's just creating 
the the sizes of the elements i don't think you're actually going to see it in fact no we don't see anything yet and we don't see anything yet because the position is uh, absolute and we haven't given it any left or right. we haven't transformed it or moved it along the x-axis at all so it's actually just hiding behind this circle so they are there just hiding so that's where we're actually going to start animating so now i'm going to say spinner dash two before i'm going to animate the before circle and i'm going to say transform and we're going to go translate x and that's going to we're going to bring it 120 percent that way so negative 120 percent and so let's save that and cool okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to say transform origin so this lets you modify the origin for transformation so you can transform you can move where the origin of the element is so meaning like are you transforming from the center the top left the top right or any anywhere around the element itself you can see bottom center left top right you can actually use numeric values as well so let's go 32 pixels and so that's x and then y which is going to be important once we start our animation so we're going to call the first animation orbit dash one over one second let's do it infinite and linear to keep it safe and now we need to create that animation keyframe do it down here at the bottom keyframes and let's call it uh what we said we would orbit one zero percent we're going to say transform translate x we're going to go we're going to start at negative 120 percent and we're going to rotate it 180 degrees so at zero percent that's its first step in the timeline then at let's do 30 percent of the way through Let's change the rotate to zero degrees and leave the translate at there at one, negative 120. We're gonna go 70%. The translate will remain the same and the rotate will stay at zero. In fact, we're gonna leave it there for, for that portion as well. And then one more here, translate X. Uh, we're gonna go to negative 180 degrees. Let's see what we just created. Okay, interesting. Not quite where we're trying to get, as you can see here. This is kind of more what we're trying to get to. So we got our orbit one infinite linear. And what did we do? 3070. Oh, <laughs> that's the problem. 100%. We're going to bring it back around. So now let's save that. There we go. So it swings around and it goes, as you can see, do you see how it swings wide out here? The reason why it does that is because this is where you can see this coming into play, the transform origin. If I take this out and save it, watch what's gonna happen. In fact, the transform or it doesn't even do anything. Let's say 10 pixels, 10 pixels, just to, okay, you see how that's working? Transform, it needs a transform origin in order to, for us to animate that transform. If I just left it at nothing, it's actually, it is actually rotating, um, but you can't see it rotate because it's just a black circle. So, you know, you can't actually see that it's working. So we actually do have to have a transform origin. If I did 10 pixels and 10 pixels on the X and Y, it's going from top and left. So it's going to be rotating around that, that point. So there's actually a tympanus.net, tympanus.net. I don't really know how to pronounce that. Uh, great website though. You could see the transform origin by default is center center. You can go, you can go top center, you can go bottom center, and you can do specific uh, points like we did 10 pixels and 10 pixels and it will rotate it based on that point as if you put put a pin in in an object and then you spun it around that pin so that's kind of what we're doing here so we want to go back to our 32 pixels and 50 percent and that's going to allow it to spin on a very unusual axis so that it creates that effect. Okay, so that means we are now on to the next one. So let's style the after pseudo elements, spinner dash two after. And what we're gonna do here is we're simply, let's copy this one and just change a few of the values just to save some typing. Transform, we're gonna make this one 120%, so it's on the other side. This is gonna be half, 16 pixel, negative 16 pixels. And 50% so that when it spins around it's going to do the opposite effect 
and we can't use orbit one because it's gonna do it's gonna do that, which is really weird. Unusual stuff we're creating here. So we need to create an orbit two and do the invert inverted version of orbit one. So copy that, paste it out, and we're gonna call it orbit two, and we're gonna start at instead of the negative values, it's all just gonna be inverted. So if it's a negative, it's a positive, if it's a positive, it's a negative. So negative 120 now becomes 120, 180 now becomes negative 180, like so. So now this would be positive and leave those there. That should do, that should do the trick. I might have, I might, let's see. Okay, so now I don't want them to do that. It's actually, they're just like, they're like doing like a big, like high fives or something. Let's make this one negative 180. They're mm, odd. Okay. Those are spinning. I like this, that we're trying to figure this out together, figure out some problems together. I, at this present moment, am trying to understand why it did. it's doing this. That is very odd. Let's take, okay, let's take out orbit two. I just want to see what orbit one is doing. Orbit one is doing what we want. Yes. Orbit two, is it start, uh, orbit two, okay, wait, wait. Let's, wrote, okay. I was wrong when I said switch all the values to negative and positive. The translate needs to switch so that now orbit two is all positive values. But up here, we started like this. We have the rotates. We're gonna rotate it the exact same, just from the different side. Awesome, and there they are, spinning in the proper direction. And we have example number one, swirling around, shrinking as it gets to the top. That looks awesome. So there we go, we've got our CSS only spinners that are animating. And that's just a couple examples. You can literally create whatever you want as a spinner. Maybe, how about this, challenge for you. Create a third example, a third spinner, and make it literally whatever you want. It could be a spinning square, it could be three spinning squares, it could be something that's bouncing across the screen. It, you could you could do whatever you want for a spinner. It could be very simple, very complex, very unusual. You could combine these animations and do something very, very uh, quirky. Totally up to you. So try that out, exercise some CSS transforms and keyframes and animations and see what you can come up with. Thanks for joining me today on day number 21. See you tomorrow in day number 22.